For years, Australia has maintained a laboratory at the Loki in Papua New Guinea for the sole purpose of breeding sterile screwworm flies, which would be released en masse in Australia should rogue flies reach us from PNG or elsewhere. The theory is that the sterile flies would then breed out the intruders. A decision has been taken to close the laboratory on the grounds the funds allocated to Loloki could be better used elsewhere. A vocal opponent of the closure move is Dr Philip Spradbury, a former head of the Screwworm Project. We'll hear from Dr Spradbury in a moment, but first Blair Root's backgrounds the concern over this tiny but terrifying pest. As incredible as it seems, there's only one thing that could do more damage to our pastoral industry than these tiny flies, and that's foot and mouth disease. If the screwworm fly ever gets into Australia, it will cost us well over $400 million a year. The costs of managing our cattle and sheep industries would skyrocket by between 30 and 35 per cent. The fly operates a bit like a sheep blowfly, only many times worse. It lays its eggs in any open wound or in nasal, oral, anal and vaginal areas of the animals. It also attacks the navel areas of newborn animals. Common management practices like castration, dehorning and ear tagging also provide a target for the screwworm fly. Because the Australian pastoral industry is mostly based on open range grazing, the cost of controlling a screwworm fly outbreak would be enormous. It would be even worse if the fly became endemic. It would mean more fencing and more mustering, all of which would have dire consequences for the economics of the industry. That's where this place comes in. At the Screwworm Fly Laboratory at Laloki, scientists breed screwworm flies by the millions. The flies are then sterilised in this irradiation machine. If an outbreak were to occur in Australia, the sterile flies would be released to mate with the bandits. Because no offspring would be produced, the theory is the outbreak would simply fade away. The technique has been used successfully to eradicate the fly from Mexico and the southern USA. The closure of the Laloki facility is being strongly opposed by Dr Philip Spradbury, who founded the unit back in 1973. Well. The main reason is that it is in fact a response capability that could be used uh, in the event of screwworm fly getting into Australia. Uh, once it's closed down there will be no response capability despite plans to open perhaps a research facility in another country in Southeast Asia. At the moment we estimate that the capacity of the Loki is between 50 and 80 million flies a week depending on the methods of, uh, of rearing and of course that is a very very potent uh, response if screwworm should get into Australia. I believe the timing is, is, is incorrect, that we should be waiting for the results of certain research projects, uh, for example the work on livestock vessels and the risk of screwworm being introduced that way. There's also a, um, uh, a computer model being worked on by the Queensland Department of Primary Industries, a threat consequence model that looks very interesting and very, could be very effective. That also has another year to run before that could be utilised to assess the risk and the costs involved if screwworm gets into Australia. Well, so the, the, the decision's been made there by the Australian Agricultural Council. I, I assume that that council is not staffed by DILs. Why would they be wrong and you'd be right? Well, um, they, they, they have acted upon the recommendation of the Screw and Fly Management Committee, which does admittedly have representatives from the DPI, uh, from CSIRO and from the, the end users, the uh, uh, NFF I think have a representative on that committee. So they have made a recommendation uh, to, to the uh, ministers uh, of primary industry in this country and they've endorsed that decision to close the Loki. I still feel though that the, the decision is wrong, uh, the timing is wrong um, and that they should be hanging on to what we have what we've got at the moment until we're in a better position to, to assess the risk of screwing getting into Australia and what the likely cost might be. The, the facility will be replaced though, won't it? I understand there are some plans to replace, uh, put another facility at, in Malaysia. Well, there are plans afoot to, to set up a research laboratory only in, in another country. Malaysia is, is, is the country being spoken about at the moment. But that would have a very limited uh, capacity in, with regard to rearing screwworm fly and at this stage at least is, is planned to be only used for experimental work. 
So in fact, it would not be suitable in any way if screwing gets into Australia. So it is not a response capability. In so, so they don't plan to, to breed the flies there in Malaysia? They, they would be certainly breeding them, but they would only have a very small setup, a very small facility and a very small output. Why can't we get our flies from Mexico, where there is a facility, I understand, which breeds flies at a much more, much faster rate than has been happening in, in Moresby? No, that's not correct. Um, we, we, we can rear f the screwworm. Our species is different to the American species, by the way. There are two screwworm species in the world, the New World, which is the one in the Americas, and the Old World, which is the one that is closer to us. And our facility at Laloki is the only facility in the world that rears this particular species of screwworm fly. So, so, so you cannot use the American facility in Mexico to uh, counter a screwworm incursion in Australia if it's by the old world species. What's the time frame difference between the closure at Laloki and the opening of the new station in Malaysia? They're talking in terms of perhaps 18 months. But I still, I still contend that in fact the new facility would not have the output or the capacity or the productivity to be of any use at all in countering an incursion of screw and fly in Australia. Too great a risk, you think, to close it at this stage? I think at this stage. I mean, let's wait until we, we, we see what the risk is. I say there are two research projects uh, actually underway at the moment. Uh, once those results are through, then perhaps we can make a more, uh, uh, you know, a more professional assessment as to the risk of uh, you know, whether we should close down uh, the Loki or not. What happens if screwworm fly gets into the well, herd into Australia? What's the damage? Well, the damage is estimated, the maximum damage, if it's spread throughout its predicted range, is something in the region of $430 million a year, which is a huge amount of money. And the cost of maintaining the Loki, in fact, is, I think the last year's cost was $285,000. So we took we're talking about a very small amount of money as, a, as, a, as a, an insurance premium for protecting Australia against this incursion of this particular pest. It does seem that way, doesn't it? Dr Spadri, we have to leave it there. Thanks very much for your time today. Thank you.